In this video, we take a look at Project Config in Craft CMS, what it is, what it does, and how to safely move changes in between environments. Hey, it's Judd Lyon here with Lyon Digital. Project Config is one of Craft's most powerful features, but if you don't understand how it works, you can get yourself into some trouble. What is Project Config? As you make changes to your system settings, Craft will record those setting values to YAML files in a config project folder. You can then commit those files to your Git repository, just like your templates and front-end resources. So it's tracking your changes to the Craft database to the file system. Why on earth would you want to do that? And there's two reasons. You want to keep track of your project's changing state, and the way you're going to do that is as you're making Git commits, it's tracking those changes. And then the most important thing, the whole purpose of all of this really is to propagate new changes to other development, staging, production environments. So as things change in your development environment, you want to push those changes into staging. And if they're in the database, that can be tricky. So what this does is you're tracking it as files and then craft is smart and figures out what's going on and will apply those changes to the database. So what all this project config track pretty much everything that isn't content. So the safe assumption or any settings you're changing in the user interface are probably going to be tracked in project config. You can look in your project config directory to keep track of kind of what's going on. We'll do that in the demo in a minute. One thing to watch out for is plugins. Some plugins, they have access to project config and should be using it. Some don't, some, you know, predate project config. The other thing to watch out for and if any plugin developers are watching this, please don't put any content settings in your plugin in Project Config. I've blown a few settings away doing that. So anything that's setting and configuration in my mind goes in Project Config. Anything else out of that is kind of content related or anything that a client or an internal you know, editor or anyone's gonna to be touching, please don't put that in Project Config. But that's a bit of a side rant there. So how does this thing generally work? So let's say you're in your development environment and you're making changes, you're clicking throughout the control panel, you're adding sections, you're creating entries, you're adding users, all that jazz. As you do that, you're interacting with the interface and that's changing values and storing them in the database. Now at the same time, when project config, craft is gonna store those changes on the file system. So if you look into your config project directory, you're gonna see these weird YAML files. YAML, if you're not familiar, just stands for yet another markup language. It's a superset of JSON. It's just kind of a reader friendly language for storing key value pairs mostly. And when you get to another environment, so as you've got a staging or QA environment or in production, and you're doing a deployment that relies on Git checkout, since you have these changes, these config changes, your project config files, those YAML files, those get checked out. You run a command in the craft console to apply those changes or craft will recognize those within the interface and they will then apply those changes to the database. So this is a way of moving configuration changes from environment to environment without having to log in and click all over the place. You, you know, in, in other systems or in the past, even with craft, you do a bunch of work locally. If it's all in your templates, great, that you can easily move that stuff around. If it's stuff that affects the database, you'd have to create a bunch of stuff locally, then log into the other system and recreate it. Or you would dump your local database and try and add it to one of the other environments, which can be very problematic as well. So project config is very powerful. So a few things to keep in mind as you're getting ready to use project config. Start by reading the manual, check out the project config entry and the documentation, and also be sure to read the deployment article in the knowledge base. Both these will give you a good uh, kind of foundation on how project config works. Back up, back up, back up. Always give yourself outs and run backups as frequently as you can. There, you're never going to be mad that you had too many backups. Uh, daily, I would say, is a minimum and hourly if you can swing it. And that way you're never more than a few hours out of work or at least a day out of work. If you're running weekly backups and the site is being updated on a fairly regular basis, you can find yourself in a bad spot. So storage is cheap these days. Setting up backups is fairly easy. Most hosts have ways to do this. You can also add your own with a cron job or with a with a plugin. There's different ways of doing this, but definitely Always give yourself outs, back things up frequently. Another important thing, data should flow one way. It's a one way street. Production is your single source of truth. Don't ever move your database from staging into production 
unless you're going to create a database alongside your production database and then cut over to it but don't try and override your production database when you need to do some development work make sure you're in sync with production so dump the production database load it in your local machine if you want to push your database from the your, your dev machine into staging that's okay but project config is designed to help you move configuration settings in between environments and so you should be cutting down the amount that you're moving your database around. So think of it going clockwise or think of it as a one-way street, but don't transport your database all over the place. Trust me, weird things will happen. You'll get yourself in trouble and project config, you're gonna confuse project config. You're gonna throw off your caching. It's just, it's not a great idea. Last thing while I'm on my soapbox lecturing, turn off the ability to run updates within the craft interface in staging or production. Development's fine if you prefer doing it that way versus using the command line when you're running Composer or you're running migrations or any of that stuff, that's fine locally. But the second you get this up on the web or for other people that, to log in and be able to edit, it is way too tempting to see those update buttons or the little notifications saying there's three updates or what have you. And your client will click on it and you're gonna have a bad time. You, it'll run the update, it's gonna update your project config. You can get different versioning problems. You can try and upgrade things that may not be compatible. Turn it off. There's a setting, it's allow admin changes. Make that false in all environments, all the time, other than your local development environment. So deployment. Here are the four commands you need to be aware of. There are slight variations of these depending on your situation, but these are the core things and the order of these matters. This is very important. And if you're automating deployment, which you should be, this is the order of operations you need to pay attention to. So the first thing, composer install. You'll see in this case, there's the no interaction flag. That just means you're not around to answer questions. So if you're running this programmatically, you want it to just continue through with the command. Composer install is going to install all your dependencies. Obviously, this is just the PHP package manager. PHP craft migrate all. This is the migration console command, which is going to run any pending migrations. So if craft has been upgraded and they've made changes to the database, they're going to have some migrations that need to be run. Plugin authors, you know, sometimes plugins will make adjustments. They either add or remove or alter a database field or create a new table or whatever. And those migrations, you'll see those sometimes in the, your migrate, uh, I can't remember if it's called migrate, I think it's called migrations. There's a directory where those get dropped. This will apply those migrations. The third command is project config apply. This used to be called something else, but there's a number of console commands. Apply is gonna read what's on your file system in your project config directory and compare it against what's in the database and it is gonna apply those changes to your database. And last but not least, you can clear your caches. That's usually a good idea, just so you get kind of a fresh start there. Um, depending on your scenario and your hosting and how you have everything set up, you may selectively apply, you know, clear some caches or not. But uh, generally, I just I just wipe them and, and keep going. Let's look at a few real world examples. I'm not going to actually deploy a project. But these are real projects I have, and usually you can just adapt those four commands depending on how you're set up. So. Use the Beanstalk from Wildbit, not not AWS Beanstalk, but Beanstalk is a is an old school, I shouldn't say old school, but it's been around a long time. Git repo hosting service that also has some deployment capabilities. And they have the option to run commands kind of, you know, they've got kind of pre and post deployment hooks, which is kind of a common pattern you'll see. And here you'll see this remote path is a variable that Beanstalk gives me just to get into my project directory because these commands actually run independent of each other and I run composer install, I migrate, I apply project config, I clear the caches. The project config, you should check out the other console commands. There's rebuild, and there's a force, so you can override things. There's a few things you ought to check out, but apply is the one you're gonna do pretty much on every deployment. Here's another example from Envoyer. Um, this is a service from Laravel that works hand in hand with Forge provision servers. I like to use these in conjunction, and then Envoyer, you can import Forge servers. And since they know you're using PHP, because that's the whole point of, Lair of Forge and Envoyer, they run Composer as part of their process. And then they have these update hooks that you can kind of run before and after. So these are the ones I run after. So I change into the release directory. That release is a variable of theirs. And then run migrate all, config apply, clear caches all. Now I don't have the no interaction flag 
on a composer, they probably handle that on their end. But there's some additional options to some of these commands you can look at if you need to fine tune your setup. But this is, like I said, these are the core commands in the order. And the services you use don't matter. You can run this on anything. So if you're using Buddy or GitHub Actions or some other CI CD tool, just if you have these access to these four commands, you need to be able to run PHP from the command line so you can run the craft console, which is really just the Yeet console to run these things. All right, let's get on to the fun stuff. Enough lecturing. Get hands on with project config. So I've got my blank sandbox installation of craft CMS. And I have deleted, this is my config directory within craft. And I've deleted the project directory that project config will create. So let me hit refresh. And you'll see it just created this. So it's tracking this for me. This is project config in action. There's this kind of lead file called project.yaml. They used to put all the settings from the site in this project file. Um, I think as far as up to uh, maybe it was craft 3.5, they switched over and now there's all these different directories. So you don't have one humongous file. You've got to split out and it, it groups these pretty logically for the different types of things of track. So you see here, you can just look at this from a, at a glance and see site group sites. Uh, looks like it tracks some of your probably your GraphQL uh, schemas and stuff. So let's make some changes and watch the changes happen here. So let's say I want to change my site to from sandbox to uh, cool sandbox. And then we'll just do generic English instead of US English and let's hit save. So this is getting saved in the database obviously, but it's also changing here. You see this YAML file here, cool sandbox. It's now called Cool Sandbox and it's kind of tracking the settings along here. Now in Git, if I were to hit Git status right now, it would, sh it would show some pending changes. So as I'm making commits and this is changing over time, it's tracking this in the database. So let's make some more changes to see what happens. So let's say we want to change the, the groups. Let's new site group, whatever. You'll see here in site groups, that should be in here. Yep, so it just added one. There's new site group. This is probably the default one I already had, sandbox site group. These crazy strings are unique identifiers, so it's tracking these so that the names can change. So it uses this long generated UID. If you want to go see how this works underneath the hood, you want to look at the uh, project config class within services. It is gnarly. I mean, this is really difficult stuff to build. This is not an easy or trivial thing. It's the reason most CMSs don't even bother trying to do this. So you got to give kudos to Pixel and Tonic for pulling this off, even though when things go wrong, this can be a frustrating um, feature. But, you know, frameworks like Rails and Django and, and that those sort of things, I mean, ye, they, they have migrations and ways to do this type of thing. Craft is really cool in that it figured out kind of an in-between solution for more of us front-end developers. So. You know, other things it, it can track, let's just say test schema, whatever. Like you would really pay more attention to this than what I'm doing, but this is for demonstration purposes. You should see in schemas, there should now be a test schema. There it is in settings I had. So a couple other things to check out here. Um, there is this area within utilities for project config and these correspond there are console commands that, that correspond to this um, where if you see changes if you don't have automated deployments or something um, you'll be able to see if it if it detects a discrepancy and you can say it will give you the option to either apply the changes which is the delta you'll notice some delta directories in here which just means the difference where it's tracking the difference between the two and you can apply the difference they have this reapply everything, which probably corresponds with the force argument of project config apply. Or you can rebuild the config. Sometimes you get into a bad state and you just want to rebuild the whole damn thing. What this does is it'll read this inside out. So from your database out. So this will this will say, hey, what, what do we currently have in the database? Let's create a project config from that. So um, like I said, it's good to uh, read the documentation on this in terms of the commands. Um, that you can use for within here in the UI. Let's take a look at the terminal real fast. And let's go, I think, leave this as sites, projects, craft sandbox. It's going to be PHP, craft, help, project config. I think this will give us 
So there's the different ones. Touch will just change the timestamp so that it shows an updated version. It doesn't change anything else. Sync's deprecated. You should use apply now. There's diff, rebuild. Um, write will give you, that corresponds with this kind of download. One thing that this does, if you're if you're thinking ahead here and saying, hey, I can track all, all these settings as, as YAML files, um, that makes it so this functionality is portable. If you wanted to copy a bunch of settings between projects, if you're starting with kind of a fresh project somewhere and you want to copy over some site settings or section names or fields or that sort of thing, instead of using a plugin like Field Manager or writing some migrations from hand, um, you can, you know, export the JSON file, the YAML files, I should say. Um, YAML is a superset of JSON and move in between projects. Be very careful with that. Um, you know, if you've got a fresh install or something, you can move this, but you could get into clashes and this thing will do what you tell it. So it will override changes. This, this will read from these files and apply them to the database. And likewise, sometimes when you rebuild, you could override what's on the file system. So you need to understand how this works because you can butcher your site. Now, if you follow the advice of data flowing one way, reading the documentation and have a handle of how it works, this is a really convenient and powerful feature. So that's it for the hands-on portion here. I think you get the idea. Um, obviously you should be using Git and committing changes, you know, kind of as you're, as you're making them. And you'll notice this stuff changing on the file system in your project, uh, excuse me, config slash project directory. So there you have it. Now you know what project config is, how it works, how to keep yourself out of trouble, and most importantly, how to incorporate it into your deployment workflow. Hope you found this video useful. If you have any corrections, tips, ideas, all feedback is welcome, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.